What's up, y'all? This be your boy, Scotty, and you're watching my review on the BET Awards 2003. What is up, y'all? Before I get it, first of all, I just want to say that this award show was very much entertaining. It really surpassed all of my expectations. As y'all seen my last video on the BET Awards, I did my BET Award nominations, and I really went in on them because I really wasn't here for the nominations. My opinion hasn't changed on the nominations because I still feel like they were full of shit. However, the show itself was very much entertaining, and I just got a lot to say about it, and I'm going to, you know... I didn't write down any notes. I just got back in the house and I'm going to go by my phone. But before I get into the video itself, I just want to say a couple of things. You know, my um, video for the BET Award nominations, I did that video back in May, right? It's, a, um, it's officially July the 1st at 12, 11 a.m. Okay. I still got people commenting on that video. You know what I'm saying? And it's not positive. Every other comment is fag at this, fag at that. You, you ignorant. You making black people look bad and all of this. And this is my thing. I'm here to give you my opinion and I'm here to entertain. My personality ain't for everybody. So my thing is, um, if you don't like me and you don't like what I'm saying, there's other people to watch. I recommend you to these people every day. If you don't like me, Watch Bounty Blue. If you don't like me, watch, you know, Ashley Miller. If you don't like me, go to the more mature people like Forest Rocks, Much Love from KY, Closet Free. You got plenty of op you got plenty of options. Why are you watching me if you don't fucking like me? And what you fail to understand is when you get do when you get done, leave your negative ass comment about me, you still loosen up my views and you know, basically putting me out there for more people to watch because that very BET Awards video that I did a month ago was almost at 10,000 views already and a lot of people have been subscribing due to that video so with that being said I mean I had people threatening to kill me over that over that video you know what I'm saying like you could think that I did the video tonight they going off about some damn awards and then some girl who's obviously a Tamar Brest fan told me I need to watch what I say when it comes down to her cause she a Tamar shit bitch I wouldn't give a fuck if you was a damn marshmallow you don't tell me what the fuck I can and can't say I always let y'all know firsthand. This is my personal opinion. You can have, you can disagree with me all day, but don't come up under my videos disrespecting me. I'm not gonna take it anymore. Like all I've been doing is blocking people. I read you good, and I'm gonna block your ass. And if you get mad, that's just what it is. I don't give a fuck. Just, you know. But you know, like people always tell me, when your channel get more popular, the haters come, and that's just what it is. So with that being said, let's get into the video. With the BT Awards. Okay, the BT Awards um opened up with with Christina Brown. He um performed Fine China, his new song with Aaliyah, and I think he got a new song with Nicki Minaj. I wanna say that the performance was in, eh, it was okay. You know what I'm saying? Like I've seen better Chris Brown performances, and I don't know what's been going on with Chris Brown, but to me his performances haven't been all bad. And you know, for an opener. I don't think he should have opened the show. That's just my honest opinion. I think that somebody like Kelly Rowland should have opened up the show because I really, I am really disappointed that she wasn't the one that was performing because I really want to see her perform Dirty Laundry live. But that's just my opinion, though. But I'm not gonna say that Christine, that Christine Brown's performance wasn't um was bad, but it wasn't all that. I've seen better from from him. You know what I mean? Um, then you got MC Dyke, a.k.a. MC Light on the motherfucking ones and the motherfucking twos. I just love to hear her do the announcements. I don't give a fuck. She don't never rap another note. Shit, if I ever had a reality show, I want her to be the one next on Miss Steel Standing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like to hear her talk. She got that perfect voice for them announcements. She ought to do church announcements. But, um, we get into Smokey. Smokey is the host of the show, and I didn't know what to expect from him. You know what I'm saying? Because I haven't seen Smokey do much in the, in the past few years. So, you know, I was really scared, honestly, because I didn't think he was going to be funny at all. But he really had me laughing. Like, when I was over at my friend's house watching the show, we was really on, on, on our damn toes, laughing our ass up at his ass. Because he really was giving me, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he was really doing it. And... You know, I can really credit, give credit where it's fucking due. He really did have me on the floor laughing. So, 
I can give him that. Um, give it, give it up to Smokey. Give it up to Smokey. While he on that bullshit, he need to be trying to get on the last Friday for the fans. Why he out here doing these BT gigs? I ain't saying that I'm mad at him for doing the BT gigs because he need all the money he can get at this point. But he need to get his ass on that set and do last Friday with Ice Cube. That's what he need to do. So get into um. So I guess um Queen Miguel he won best male um best male R and B pop artist. Um, so I was pretty much happy for that because I really do think that Miguel deserved it more than anybody in that category. That's my opinion. So, um, we get into Robin Thicke. He performed Blurred Lines and I never really appreciated the song until I saw him performing live. And me personally, because the only reason I'm comparing these two is because they're doing this blue-eyed soul thing. You know, they're white boys doing R&B music. And I personally prefer Robin Thicke over Mustang Timberlake. But that's just my opinion. But with that being said, you know what I'm saying. They did the damn thing. Um, Robin Thicke is pretty much low-key a black dude, in my opinion. He low-key a black-ass dude, in my opinion. So, you know, he really gave it to me. I liked that performance. He they, he performed his ass off. He did the damn thing, and I and I pretty much enjoyed it. Um, then you got Gabrielle Boring and Mangela Bassett. They come out there to present the award for um, Best Male Rap Artist. And Kendrick Lamar, of course, got the award. In my opinion, Kendrick Lamar deserved it. He has been one of the most premier rap artists that have come out this year. He's very compelling. He's very lyric, lyrical. And I think that um, he reminds me a lot of the rappers in the 90s. A lot of his raps have substance. I think that him and J. Cole are one of the two... Um, Greatest, not greatest, but one of the um, two of the most, two of the best male MCs that's out right now as far as in the 2010s era. So, you know, I'm glad that Kendrick got it. I think he deserved it. Um, this, um, some, it was an award, I think it was the, um, the Young Stars Award that Gabrielle Douglas won. Now, I know I fucked up on the last video and was like, I didn't know who the hell she was. But I really did feel slow after doing the video because I had totally forgot that she was the black girl that won the Olympics. And um, in my opinion, you know, she did the damn thing. She had on that nice ass wig because she didn't want y'all going in on her nappy roots this time. So she got up there. She was grand. She was beat as fuck and she won her motherfucking award like she was supposed to. So shout out to you, Gabrielle Douglas. I'm really sorry that I got that shit fucked up on the last video because I really Really forgot her name because I'm not into the Olympics and shit like that. I'm mainly into entertainment and music, so forgive me. Shoot me now if you want to. So then we get into Kendrick Lamar. His performance. He performed swimming pools. And then he performed Bitch Don't Kill My Vibe. And he brought Erica Badu out there with her tomato ass. She got a big ass. And it's like the sun. And um, you know, they did their thing. This performance was so 90s to me. Erica Badu was singing her ass off, but she really gave me the emphasis that I needed on the word bitch. She was going to fuck ham on this shit. And um, I was just feeling this shit like she was really doing the damn thing. She was really doing it, and I'm sorry. I love the performance. I think that Erica Badu, if it wasn't like somebody made it made um made a suggestion that if it wasn't Erica Badu on the stage with him singing "Bitch Don't Kill My Vibe," it should have been Mary J. Blige. So I really do give um Kendrick Lamar the utmost respect because, like I said, he's he's a very he's a very good lyricist, and I really think that you know he's gonna go far in his career. That was a good performance. Um, we might be seeing a, a, a Kendrick Badu coming soon because you know how Erica Badu is. But then, you know, they show, uh, shout out to TV One. They got their little um, pr promo during um, best, um, BET Awards for R&B Divas LA. But I'm still mad that Tevin Campbell and Jesse Powell wasn't part of the cast. But I'm just going to leave it alone. So then, you know, R. Kelly comes out looking like Sonic the Hedgehog. He performs, he does um, a melody of his hits. And me and my friends were just going back and forth singing all his songs. And we was getting mad because he wasn't performing certain songs. And you can tell a motherfucker is a genius and a motherfucker is the king of R&B. But they got that many damn hits. And we getting mad because he ain't singing our favorite hit. You know, he was like, my cousin was, not my cousin, my best friend was like, why won't he sing the Jeep song? I want him to sing you Remind Me of My Jeep. And I'm like, that's what I want to hear too. God damn. I be driving to that song right now. And that song came out back in 96. It's 2013. And I be driving around listening to that song. But it goes to show you that Sonic the Hedgehog is a motherfucking R&B legend. It doesn't matter what he do. He's a fucking genius. He can go from doing motherfucking freaking R&B songs to a... He can go from doing Bump and Grind to going to do a song like... 
I Can't Sleep, Baby, to a song like I Am Your Angel, to a song like I Believe I Can Fly, to a song like um, You Saved Me, then he can make your ass step with step in the name of love. That's what you call a fucking genius. And as a songwriter, as much as Mary J. Blige, um, you know, is, is the most influence behind my writing because I write what I feel and I like to write real life stories, I take my hat off to R. Kelly because he is one of the most profound, so prolific songwriters that I have ever seen in my life. He can go from doing a rap song to an R&B song to a pop song to a gospel song. He can even do country if he fucking want to. R. Kelly is a motherfucking genius and I can't say it enough. I don't give a fuck how many bitches he piss on. He can piss on, he, he can piss on how many bitches he want to as long as he piss on that pen and pad and give us some classics like he keep doing. This motherfucker can go from bumping grind to an album like fucking love letter that goes back to the Motown 60s days. Like this motherfucker is a genius and can't nobody tell me differently. R. Kelly is a motherfucking genius so I give credit where it's due. Fuck what y'all talking about. R. Kelly is a genius. Bottom line. So then the gospel award comes up and I'm really rooting for Cora because I really want Cora to win. Because she got this song called Take Me to the King. And I really wanted Cora Jean to win. But then they gave it to Mary Mary. And I feel like that was a bunch of bullshit. Because of the simple fact. My thing is. Why the fuck is they giving it to Mary Mary? They always give it to Mary Mary. If it ain't Mary Mary, it's Yolanda. If it ain't Yolanda, it's Donnie. Like, I really feel like Cora should have won. Because Cora got one of the biggest songs on gospel radio right now. And everybody feeling Cora. So, I think that Cora should have won. That's just my opinion. She all, if, if Cora would have won an award, all I needed for her to do was say, I want to thank Medea, I want to thank God, I want to thank Brown. I mean, damn, I, I just want to call her to win. But, you know, whatever. BET on that fuck shit. Um, so then we get into Mariah Carey, one of my least favorite performances. Okay, the, first of all, the bitch lip singing. Second of all, the song is whack as fuck. I don't like the song, so I'm sorry, Lambs. You know, I've never been a big Mariah Carey fan. I do like some of her songs, and I never really have much bad to say about her, but... I don't like that song, bottom line. And, you know, she I guess this is the remix to the song. It got Miguel and Young Jeezy. Then Young Jeezy came out and was like, R.I.P. R.I.P. You know, that's the song right now. You know, that's the, that's the anthem right now, R.I.P. And then, you know, we go into a commercial and they show us um, the the um, the pilot to the TV show, Being Mary Jane. It's, it's, it's going to start off as a movie like Single Ladies did, but it's really a show in the movie. It's the pilot for the show, and I cannot wait till I see Being Mary Jane. Okay, I feel like um, Kevin, Kevin Hart was doing too much. Okay, he knows that he's a lame ass. You know what I'm saying? He knows that he's lame, so he got to do extra shit. To do, to do what it do. You know what I'm saying? You gotta do extra shit to be funny. And, you know, I just don't like this shit. So, I never really found Kevin Hart funny. Like, he got his moments, but I've never found him funny. So, it is what it is. Jamie Foxx won for Best Actor. He deserved it. Um, as far as um, Best Face, they gave that award to Amber Rose. I've always felt like Amber Rose is very overrated. Um, as far as looks, I know a lot of bitches that look better than her, but that's just my opinion, my opinion, my opinion, my opinion. So then, we get into the uh, BET Award for Best Female Hip Hop Artist. And we got Azalea Banks, we got Eve, we got some bitch named Ra Ra, we got Nicki Minaj, and we got the Georgia Prune. I was laughing my ass off because everybody knew that Nicki was going to win this motherfucking award. I don't even know why they got the BET award for a female artist even televised. Because of the simple fact, we already know that Nicki going to win. Bottom line. In one minute, Nicki went from professional to fucking ratchet in three seconds. I'm like, this bitch is fake as hell. So then, um... Queen Miguel, he got up and he performed by himself. He performed How Many Drinks with Kendrick Lamar. They did the damn thing. I just love to see Miguel perform. He's one of my favorite male, about to say female, goddamn. He's one of my favorite male R&B singers out right now. So I love me some Miguel. I don't give a damn what damn bitch say I love Miguel. Um, so Yvette and this young girl who was nominated for an Oscar, I think. I don't remember her name, so kill me now, but I don't remember her name. But they um presented the award. I think it was for Best New Artist. And Kendrick Lamar, Kendrick Lamar won that. So basically, he won two awards so far. And I was so happy for him. I just think that Kendrick Lamar is the shit. And I think that he going to get a Grammy. I believe it. If he ain't got one already, I believe he going to get one. So for the Best Hair... 
My girl came and she had one. So my best friend recorded me on Instagram acting a damn fool because she won an award for best hair. But she deserved it. Fuck it. The Charlie Wilson um, tribute, bananas. I don't give a fuck. That was a tribute. You know what I'm saying? That shitted on that Patty LaBelle shit they tried to throw off on us. That was a motherfucking tribute. India Ari brought her ass out there and was singing her ass off with that damn head wrap on her head like she just got the damn bath out the damn shower. She killed that shit. Then you got Jamie Foxx. He killed that song, Yearning for Your Love. Jamie Foxx was killing that shit. He was killing that shit. He was killing that shit. And then you had um Charlie... um. Charlie Wilson out there in the audience just enjoying himself with his wife Paula Dean on his side. And I was like, Paula Dean repping for her man. He gon' she is repping for her motherfucking man. When Charlie got up there and he sung or whatever, you had Snoop Dogg, you had Jane, you had everybody on that stage. And when I say that Paula Dean was in that audience repping for her man, I was like, when they after Charlie get done getting his award and performing and shit, they gonna get some herbs and spices later on tonight. Cause Paula was representing for her man. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. They did that mother. The fucking performance. So then um, J. Cole came out. He performed Crooked Smile. I really wanted T. Boz and Chili to come out. That would have been a good moment for the BET Awards, but whatever. I can't always have what I want, right? So then um, he performed Power Trip. You know, that was just a regular performance. You know, nothing much to, you know, to, 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 to scream about. Then we get into Cora. Corey gets on stage and she performs Take Me to the King. And I don't even go to church every Sunday. But that bitch took me to church. Cora Jean took me to church and she performed Take Me to the King. Because I don't even go to church all the time. I don't hardly go. So with that being said, she did the damn thing. So then, Sierra Princess Harris. She knew that this BET Award performance was a make or break. Just like that motivation performance was for Kelly Rowland. This performance was a make or break. She opened it up with Nicki Minaj performing her verse song, I'm Out. Then she came out with Body Party. And I must say that she did that. I was, that was the performance I was waiting to see all motherfucking night with Sierra. And I just think that Sierra clowned and she did the damn thing. And whoever sitting up here dogging this bitch out about their performance. They fucking hating. That's that's my opinion. I think that that bitch did the damn thing. She killed that fucking stage in one of the best performances of the night. I don't care. She did this shit. And just give props where it's due. Everybody like to shade Sierra. Everybody like to make it seem like Sierra just ain't talented at all. But Sierra did that. Can't nobody kill no stage in this era better than Sierra. That's my opinion. Can't nobody take that from me. She did the damn thing. If you and if you talking about her like a damn fool, then you you an idiot. Cause even after that damn performance, her damn single and her album went up on iTunes. That goes to show you that people is waiting for that bitch. We've been rooting for her and we glad that she won. Best collaboration went to ASAP Rocky. Another um award that Kendrick Lamar won. And I was glad that ASAP Rocky won because I love ASAP Rocky. So then Deborah Flea comes out. And then, um, you know what I'm saying? She talks about the Humanitarian Award. And Dwayne Wade, he comes out and he accepts and, you know, he gives his props to um, Gabrielle Union being his woman and everything like that. And I was like, you know, you know rep for your woman. Rep for her. Do it. So, you know, he won his humanitarian award. Now, best movie, I thought that that was some fuck shit. Think like a man should not have won no best movie. Django should have won or either... Ugh, I forgot that other movie or Sparkle. Those are the two movies that should have won. I cannot believe that Think Like a Man won. But I ain't hating, I ain't hating, I ain't hating. So then for the um, last BT Awards performance was Janelle Monae, her and Erica Badu, Kill that shit. I don't even listen to Janelle Monet. And I just live to see her perform because of the simple fact she really can kill a stage. I really honestly think that I can give her all the props in the world, all the respect in the world. I might not buy her albums, I might not listen to her music, but Janelle Monet can kill a motherfucking stage. She really can. And with that being said, I give this BT Awards a fucking A. They killed that shit. This is the best BT Awards. Um, ceremony I've seen in years. You mean, I mean, the performances was on point. The winners were the accurate winners, in my opinion. Some of them, most of them. The tribute was out the chain. Um, the moments were great. The host was great. Everything about it was amazing. And I can't say it the least. I cannot say it 
I can't say nothing else. I just enjoyed myself. Me and my friends were enjoying ourselves. We enjoyed our motherfucking self. That this BT Awards is gonna is really gonna give um is really gonna make y'all have to work for the next one, in my opinion. So with that being said, this is all I got for y'all for the BT Awards. Um I'm finna go ahead and post this video. Follow me on Twitter at www.twitter.com slash Mr. Underscore Still Standing Without the G and follow me on Instagram at King of the South23. I'm gonna go ahead and post this video up. I did not see Big Brother, nor did I see Real Housewives in New Jersey because we was all in two BET awards. So what I'm gonna do I'm going to try to do, I'm going to do my um, New Jersey video tomorrow, but going to post it on Tuesday. Since R&B Divas isn't coming on on Wednesday, I'm probably going to do a Big Brother video that day. And then on Thursday, you know, I'm just going to see how I'm going to do it. Because, you know, whatever. And, you know, Love and Hip Hop comes on on Monday. So that's my main priority on Monday. So with that being said, you guys, I'm out of here. Peace.